so today I'm going to be talking about my top 20 favorite books that I read this year in 2022. And last year I only did my top 10 favorite books. And I feel like that's the most common thing you see is people doing top 10 lists. But this year I read a lot of really good books that I did not want to leave out. There's a lot of books here that I wanted to talk about. So I decided to do a top 20. And I am splitting this into two separate categories, um, same as I did last year. The first of which is middle grade and YA. I'm kind of lumping those together in one category. And then the second uh, top 10 that I'm doing will just be general fiction or adult fiction, I guess. So first I'll be talking about all of the children's and young adult books that I read, my top 10 favorite of those. And then I know I have kind of different audiences that follow my channel. I know there's probably some of you here just to see like the Goosebumps type content, like the kids horror books, that kind of thing. Um, and then the ones who maybe don't read as much or care about as much of that stuff. Um, so I'll put a timestamp somewhere down on the video or the description for separating the two categories if you just want to skip ahead to see the general or adult fiction. And of course, for these um, top 10, or I guess I'm doing a top 20 list, these are just books that I've read this year. These are not new releases by any means. As a matter of fact, you will probably see that a lot of these books are really old. And these are also books that I've read for the first time. I'm not doing rereads for this list with one possible exception, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. So yeah, let's just get started, guys. Um, I read about 120 books this year. And I'm sure I'll read a couple more books uh, before before the new year. But I highly doubt that I'll read anything that will knock anything off this list I already have. I have a pretty solid list here. So yeah, let's just get started. Again, starting with the middle grade and YA books. We're going 10 to 1 from least favorite to favorite. But all, of course, all of these books I really enjoyed. So starting off at number 10 is Step on a Crack. This book is part of the Spine Tingler series. This book is number 9 written by M.T. Coffin, which is a pretty cool pen name. And this book really, really surprised me. So this is the second Spine Tingler's book that I've read, and I wasn't expecting much going into it. The first one I read, I did not really care for at all. And there's actually various authors that contributed to this series. This isn't a single author that wrote all of these books. And this one was written so much better than the previous one that I read. And the reason I enjoyed this one so much is just the concept of this one was just wild and some of the stuff that happens in here is just crazy and just surprisingly violent. It's basically about this ancient monster entity type creature. It's kind of ambiguous. It doesn't give a very specific background or like description of this creature, but he lives under the earth and it does um, make some mention that it's traveled to other planets and destroyed other planets. And he basically lives under the earth underground and once every like 500 years or so he creates these rifts and holes in the ground like and causes these earthquakes and like sucks people down into the holes and this one had a crazy prologue that takes place like i don't know like in the 1600s or something 1700s in america um he like does this crazy earthquake in a, like this native american tribe i think it is and it describes sucking these people down through this hole and there's like blood f shooting up in the air like a fountain and it was crazy. It was awesome. And I loved every minute of it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just kind of mindless entertainment, just very mindless kids horror. There's really not a lot of substance to this, but I just enjoyed it for how wild it was. Honestly, the concept concept to this was great. The execution maybe wasn't perfect. I think it probably could have gone a little bit further with this idea here. We could have gotten a little bit more explanation behind this creature. And it does get a little bit repetitive at times with... Um, what happens but it was just still a really fun book i just love the idea of it and it surprised the hell out of me so yeah step on a crack is at number 10. moving on to number nine we have a bruce colville book how i survived my summer vacation this is the first book in the camp haunted hill series i believe this is the second bruce colville book that i've read and i really enjoyed this one uh this was just a very fun quick read uh mostly humor it's kind of got like some horror elements to it, a few thrills and chills, I guess you could say, kind of cozy, nothing like too scary, uh, more comedy than anything. It's about these kids that go to this summer camp, and I believe they're like learning how to like shoot a movie together and like learning about how the filming process works. 
And there's just a lot of different things and scenarios that happen in this book. Um, just different shenanigans the characters get into, pranks they pull on each other. It's just a very amusing, quick, charming read. And towards the end, things do get a little bit crazy. There's like a family of Sasquatches living in the woods and they kidnap the main character because the main character um, like dresses up as a Bigfoot to like act in this movie that they're making. Uh, something like that, I don't remember. Uh, but it was pretty entertaining. I had a good time with it. I never read Bruce Colville when I was a kid. I don't know why I just had never heard of him or never picked up one of his books as a kid, but I feel like I would have absolutely loved them. I'm enjoying going back and reading his books now as an adult. I have more on my TBR lined up. So yeah, this was a quick fun read. Uh, moving on to number eight, we have Die For Me by Carol Gorman. And this is a YA book, as you can probably tell looking at the cover. So this one is basically about this group of friends that opens up this Ouija board at a party. And the Ouija board basically tells them that they're going to die. I think it points to specific characters and it tells them that they're gonna, going to die. And sure enough, as time passes, this group of friends, um, they start getting like picked off one by one. So going into this, I was expecting something just cheesy, fun, violent, um, just a quick like fun horror story. And it was a, quite a bit different than I expected. It does have some elements of like a slasher to it kind of, but it's more of a mystery than a horror. So our main character, She's very practical. She doesn't really believe in the supernatural. A lot of her friends think that this Ouija board uh, is telling the truth that there is some kind of supernatural presence, picking them off one by one. But she knows better. She, our main character, I forget their names already. Our main character thinks that someone is behind this. And sure enough, there is. So she sets out to solve the mystery and figure out who's doing these killings and solve the mystery and put a stop to it. And there's really not a lot of description of the violence in here. It's pretty tame for the most part. I was hoping for something a little bit more wild and fun and, and violent and bloody. It doesn't really go too far with it. Uh, but it was still a very fun read. And even though it was quite a bit different than I expected. So yeah, uh, Die For Me by Carol Gorman. If you're into YA thrillers and mysteries, I would recommend giving this one a shot. Because I believe this one is just kind of an obscure book. Uh, I've never heard of it before. I've never heard of the author before. But it was a fun read. I recommend this one. So moving on to number seven, we have a Fear Street book, and that is The Dead Lifeguard. And this one I read back in the summertime, and I can say that this is probably one of my favorite Fear Street books that I've read so far. It does sort of follow the formulaic standard Fear Street um, format, I guess. There's the murder mystery. You have a lot of the teen melodrama in here where there's a lot of the focus on the relationships between uh, the characters and he, she thinks he's hot and is he single and boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. It's super cheesy and melodramatic, but um, sometimes Arl Stein can do it in a way where it's very like tongue in cheek and just humorous. And this one definitely falls into that category. It got me to chuckle a few times. And the mystery in this one really had me. So after having read so many of these books, they become a bit predictable after a while. Um, occasionally Ar he'll catch, Arl Stein will catch you off guard with a twist you don't see coming. And this one really, really threw me off. <laughs> this one threw me for a loop big time. I was not expecting the twist we got to this book. It really surprised me. And I had a good time with it just in general, trying to figure out the mystery. Who's the culprit? Who's killing all of these lifeguards in this book? This one also kind of has elements of a slasher to it. And this was just a really fun book. Uh, definitely one of my favorite Fear Streets I've read so far, but I've got a long ways to go. I've still only read a very small percentage of my Fear Street collection. So yeah, yeah, The Dead Lifeguard comes in at number seven. At number six, we have another Fear Street book. And this one is Trapped. This is actually the very last Fear Street book in the original series, number 51, I believe. And I think I gave this one the same rating as I did The Dead Lifeguard. But the reason I give a slight edge to this book is this one is very unique. It doesn't follow the standard format or formula of a Fear Street book. There's no really murder mystery to this one. There's not as much teen melodrama. You don't really have the threatening mysterious phone calls that seem to be in almost every Fear Street book. You don't really get any of that in here. What you have here is more of a straightforward standard horror story with lots of suspense and tension to it and it works so well. 
I'm almost, I hate to say it, but I'm almost wondering if maybe this one had some ghost writing to it. I know there's one other Fear Street book that I can think of that I believe is confirmed to have been ghost written from the original series. I'm wondering if maybe this one also could have possibly been ghost written. I don't know, but it, this one is so much different than any other Fear Street book I've read. It's basically about these kids that discover this underground like catacomb type thing underneath the school. And what they discover down there is absolutely horrifying. And there is this, I don't want to spoil it, but there's basically this supernatural entity that's pursuing them and killing off these high school kids in very gruesome ways. Just, <laughs> just very brutal. And it's awesome. <laughs> I was not expecting that going into this book. And it was a lot of fun, very entertaining. It's very linear and straightforward, um, which makes it, I guess, kind of shallow. It's maybe not quite as entertaining as some of the other Fear Street books doesn't have as more uh, complex mystery like the Dead Lifeguard did, but it was just different, and I liked it for that reason, and very intense too. So yeah, as a horror story, I feel like this one succeeds the most in the Fear Street series. So yeah, Trap comes in at number six. At number five, we have the last, oh no, I lied, not the last, but another R.L. Stein book on this list. Are you surprised there's half this list is comprised of R.L. Stein? Uh, this one is from the Nightmare Room series, and that is Locker 13. So, I've read quite a few Nightmare Room series books uh, this year, and I think this one might possibly be my favorite so far. This one follows kind of like the superstition and like luck tropes that Arl Stein has used in some of his other books, like Bir The Birthday Party of No Return. Um... That's actually all I can think of off the top of my head. I know there's been others, but in this one, one of the reasons I like this one so much is this is one of the few handful of books R.L. Stein has wrote um, in regards to like the Goosebumps type books that has layers to it and some deeper meaning. I'll admit, most Goosebumps books and most of the middle grade books that he writes, they're just shallow, mindless fun, but there are a handful that do have layers to them, some, some kind of message. And they just really resonate with me. And this is one of them. This one is incredible. It's all about fear and how, how we handle that emotion and how we can let it control us. And it's just, it's really good, honestly. This book really surprised me. I give it a solid four out of five stars. And this is, this was a really good book. I highly recommend checking this out. The Nightmare Room series so far in general has been really good. There's only been a couple books from that series. I did not like it all, uh, but I, this one is definitely one of the best ones, in my opinion. So yeah, Locker 13 comes in at number five. All right, at number four, we have The Sign of the Beaver by Elizabeth George Spear. This is the second book I've read by Elizabeth George Spear, and it's not quite as good as the first one I've read. First book I read of hers, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. It's one of my all-time favorite books. And she is an author of historical fiction, um, and that's exactly what this is, is historical fiction. It's about this kid who is basically moving to this, it takes place in like the 1700s, I think, 16, 1700s. And it's about this kid that's left in like this uncharted part of the United States. And his dad goes back to um, the more civilized port, uh, parts of the country over on the East Coast to go back to retrieve the, the rest of their family and supplies and things like that. And it takes a long time for his father to come back. And um, the kid thinks that he might be left alone. And while he's left at this little cabin that they've constructed and to survive and fend for himself in the woods, he's discovered by this Indian tribe. And he basically makes friends with this young Indian boy. And they just sort of teach each other things, survival skills. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But it it was really good. I enjoyed this book. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it, but this was a really good book. I believe it won a yearling or a Newbery, Newbery Honor is what it was. And I can see why. It was, Elizabeth George Spear is a great writer. So yeah, this comes in at number four. At number three, we have the last R.L. Stein book on this list. I promise this time, this is the last one. And this is a book that also really surprised me going into it. So this is a book that's actually edited by Arl Stein called Beware. Very cool cover on this one, by the way. There's only two stories in this book that are actually authored by Arl Stein, and the rest 
are stories that he picked out for this collection. This is like his favorite stories targeted towards the younger audience. And I can see why. Going into this, I didn't really know what exactly to expect. I thought maybe there'd be some good stories in here. And maybe a lot of not so good ones. But I was surprised to discover that I enjoyed almost every story in this collection. I think there were two stories in here that I didn't really care for all that much. They were just kind of okay, mediocre. But Arl Stein has a great taste in literature. Our high literature, it is not, I'll admit. <laughs> Most of this is kind of in the style of the stuff that he likes to write, which is understandable. It makes sense. It's just fun horror stories, um, hum lots of humorous stories. And all of, a lot of them in here just have twist endings, the kind of thing that Arl Stein himself likes to do. Um, but it was just very fun. It was a very entertaining book. And it has a lot of variety to it, too. Not everything in here is just straight horror. There's a lot of classics in here. There's a story um, by Bram Stoker in here, one by Ray Bradbury. And there's also a lot of newer stuff in here. We also have a comic book entry from, uh, like, the old Tales from the Crypt, uh, EC-style comics. Let me see if I can find it real quick. In here, it's right here. The Vault Keeper's Grim Fairy Tale, a sock for Christmas. So yeah, we get like a comic book entry from one of those old EC comics. And it was very entertaining. I loved it. So yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff in this book. Uh, it's just got great variety. And that's what I liked about it is no story in here was the same. And Arl Stein's stories in here, the ones that he wrote himself, were fantastic also. I love them. And I believe they're exclusive to this collection. I've never read them previously in any other book that I can think of. So yeah, uh, this was a great book. Again, I think there was only a couple stories in here I didn't care for as much. And I think my favorites were, let me look at the contents real quick. Uh, the Conjure Brother by Patricia McKissack, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. That was one of my favorites. That was a really good one. Um, the Surprise Guest by Arl Stein. I really enjoyed that one. The Sock for Christmas, the EC Comics entry. That was definitely one of my favorites in here. So yeah, there's also a couple of poems in here by Shel Silverstein, which I have read before and hit Shel Silverstein's books. So yeah, this was just a great book, and it comes in at number three. All right, moving on to my top two favorite children's books. And at number two, we have, again, I know I've said this a lot, but <laughs> this is also one that's really surprised me. I knew nothing about this going into it, and that is The Ghost Next Door by... Wiley, Folk St. John, Willie, Folk St. John. I I don't know how to pronounce that name. And this is a book I knew nothing about. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace one day for $5. And I thought, what the heck? I'll pay $5 for this. It's got a cool cover. It looks like an old vintage, like middle grade horror book. Sure, I'll give it a shot. And this book ended up being one of my top favorite books of the year. I absolutely adored this. So, it's not exactly a horror story. Again, it was a bit different than I expected it, kind of like Die For Me by Carol Gorman. This is more of a mystery. Um, it has like some horror elements to it, but it's more of a mystery with just lots of that children's humor, that like trademark children's humor you see in a lot of these books. But it works very well, and it's just, just a very amusing, charming book about this group of kids that's trying to figure out whether or not this ghost is real that's haunting this house, or if it's some kind of scheme being put on by somebody, um, some sort of shenanigan going on. Um, yeah, it's basically these kids trying to figure out whether or not the legend of this ghost is real. But it was just so entertaining. This book just, I was fascinated with it, honestly. And I want to read more by this author now. Apparently she wrote quite a few children's books um, back in the day. Let me see what the date on this is again. I know it's a bit older. 1971. So yeah, I believe this is the oldest book here on my list of children's books so yeah um i highly recommend this i don't know what else to say about it this was just a really really fun book i can see myself rereading this one in the future okay moving on to number one my favorite children's book of the year and this one is a classic and a winner of the newberry medal award and that is bridge to terabithia by katherine patterson and I don't know what to say about this. This is a classic, guys. Uh, it was turned into a movie, which I remember watching, vaguely remember watching a long time ago. And the book is so much better, though. The book is way better. It's a very emotional book. Um, this one has a very realistic and tragic portrayal of grief in it. 
it's unlike any other children's book I've read when it comes to that. It, in dealing with more mature adult themes such as death and um, learning to like deal with the grief of it, this book is just, it handles it in a way that's just so realistic and it's just heart-wrenching and it is just such a great book. Um, yeah, I don't know how I've never read this before when I was a kid. This is the first time read for me this year, but it was absolutely fantastic. And yeah, my number one children's book of the year, Bridge to Terabithia. All right, moving on to my top 10 general adult fiction books of the year. And at number 10, we have Code Red by Regina St. Clair. Now, this is a book that is basically a throwback to the old 70s and 80s paperback from hell, vintage horror era of books. And I've read a few of those this year, like vintage horror books in my collection that I hadn't gotten to yet. I read, I read a few of them this year. And most of them were kind of disappointing, to be honest. They always have cool covers, and I kind of like the idea of collecting them, and I see them pop up a lot in the BookTube community, especially on Cameron Chaney's channel. And But a lot of the time, the stories end up being kind of disappointing. Um, some of them are really disappointing. <laughs> a couple of them were just terrible. But this one, a modern story, this would just come out this year, I think, or the year before, maybe. This one was by far the best one, even though it's not vintage it's very much like those old vintage horror novels in that it's just very fun violent bloody action-packed and just very humorous there's just a lot of humor in here and it's just supposed to be a fun read is really all it is just entertainment horror this one is basically about vampires i'm not going to talk about this book too much i have a review of it up on my channel if you want to watch it back in my october reading wrap up but yeah I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. I enjoyed it a bit more than I thought I was going to. And it comes in at number 10 on my list. So at number nine is a book that I actually don't have with me. I borrowed it from the library, but I'll post a picture of it somewhere up here. And that is Deliverance by James Dickey. And this is a book that I've kind of had my eye on for a while. I had seen the movie before, but I just hadn't got around to reading the book yet. But I finally decided to borrow the book from the library and read it and it was better than the movie I guess that's not really a surprise they most of the time books are <laughs> uh, but this book it was really good I really enjoyed it it was very intense and very just grim and kind of like gritty it just had that sort of bleak hopelessness feeling to it there was just a lot of just that raw emotion to it and it's just a sur good survival story and I think that's why I like it so much I love a really good survival story a uh, story about how far will you go to save yourself or save your protect your loved ones your friends um, whoever you're with there's just something that fascinates me about the willpower um, that some of us have and I don't know I just find that kind of fascinating but yeah this was a great book Deliverance by James Dickey is, comes in at number nine at number eight we have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury uh, this is again, this is another classic as you'll probably see on this list. There's a lot of classics <laughs> that I have never read before, but I finally decided to sit down and read and everyone knows about this book by now. I'm sure it's about a dystopian future where books are not quite illegal. The majority of books are banned. I think there's some books I can't remember for sure that are allowed that are just like government propaganda, that kind of thing. But for the most part, books are like illegal. And if you have books, this team of firefighters they're called they come and burn all your books and um if you like try to hide them they're gonna you're basically gonna die in the fire too or whatever and yeah this was just a great great book uh this is the second book by ray bradbury that i've read the first of which was something wicked this way comes and that one even though that one is known as a very uh very well-loved classic as well that one didn't really connect with me all that much for whatever reason this one did a lot more though. I absolutely love this book. I give it a solid four out of five stars. And yeah, I don't really know what to say about these classics that haven't been said already. So yeah, if you haven't read Fahrenheit 451 yet, go give this one a read. Okay, moving on to number seven, we have The Fellowship of the Ring. Now, I'm just going to spoil it right now. I have finished the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy and the other two books are on this list. But the reason I decided to put this one at the bottom, as much as I loved it, 
is that this one starts out very, very slow. This one is really just build up for what happens in the following books. And there's just a lot of just nonsense too <laughs> in this first book. The first 200 pages is just description of the hobbits walking through the woods, walking through the Shire, uh, walking alongside the river, walking through the mountains, stopping and eating, walking some more, stopping and eating again, singing songs. And it's just like, come on, like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. But as slow paced and overly detailed as this was, I still really enjoyed it. And I'll just say this right now. I, I know for a fact I like the Lord of the Rings books more than the movies. And I was scared. I was a bit nervous going into this because I wasn't a big fan of The Hobbit, which I read last year. But the Lord of the Rings books are much, much better. And I was worried about them being just kind of boring and overly detailed. And they are a little bit at times, mostly just in this first book. But it's worth it, I think. There's there's a lot of depth to these books that you don't get with the movies. And even this one, even though this one is just a bit slow at times, I still really enjoyed it. So yeah, Fellowship of the Ring comes in at number seven. At number eight, we have... I gotta recheck my list here because I'm not at number eight. I'm at number six, and that is Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. Again, I know I keep saying this, but this is another one that really surprised me. I didn't know what to expect going into this. Um, obviously, I've read all the class, well-known classics by Robert Louis Stevenson. I even have one more book of his on this list. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This one I had never read of, uh, never heard of or read before. And I just decided to pick it up kind of on impulse earlier this year. I think I read it back in the summer. And this book was fantastic. It's basically about this friendship between these two guys. And it's kind of a survival story, sort of like Deliverance. Not really anything like that book, but they kind of share the similarity that they're both survival stories in a way. And it's about these two unlikely um, companions that sort of are relying upon one another to get through this sort of war that's going on between these two clans, these two like countries. And they're both, they both have bounties on their heads. They're shipped off to be slaves, but they escape the ship. And there's these people looking for them. And they're basically traveling through the wilderness and through these countries, trying to remain hidden, trying to stay low key. And they're from like opposite sides of the, I don't know, the spectrum, the family clans, whatever it was. I, I don't remember all the fine details and they're supposed to be enemies by tradition or something like that, but they end up um, merging in this friendship and it's just, just very like heartwarming and kind of realistic. And it just, the characters were just so believable in life. Like I love the two characters in this and this was just such a fantastic book. I absolutely loved it. Solid four out of five stars for this one. Uh, maybe even like a four and a half, honestly, this was a great book. I absolutely love kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. And that's why it comes in. At number six okay moving on to my top five favorite books of the year and these top five they might be in a different order on a different day i just decided to go with this for right now it's kind of tough to decide which ones i like more out of these they're all very close to the same all be they all get like between a four and five star rating but anyways these are my top five favorite books that i read this year and starting off with number five we have Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is actually not the version of this that I read. I have an older paperback copy that I read. But I bought this one um, a little while back just to add to my Penguin Classics collection. And I want to reread it and read this version because this one is a different translation. And from what I've heard, it's a better translation of the original book. So yeah, eventually I'll reread it. But... 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was great. It was phenomenal, honestly. <laughs> There's not too many books nowadays, or I should say it doesn't happen too often, where I've become completely immersed in the story, and it feels like I'm right there. But when it does, my rating for the story is just going to skyrocket, because to me, that's just such a huge factor of the book. And occasionally, I think it's not always um, the book that causes that immersion. I think sometimes my mood or just different things can play a part in that. But I was just so engaged and immersed in the story uh, for pretty much the entire book almost. It felt like I was right there. It felt like I was in the submarine with Captain Nemo and these other characters during this <clears throat> very long duration that they were underwater. And it was just such an experience that I had to rate it highly and 
I'm definitely going to go back to read this one eventually. So yeah, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Another fantastic classic that I've read for the first time this year. All right, moving on to number four, we have another, another Lord of the Rings book. This one is The Two Towers. And this one was so much more action-packed, so much faster paced than the first book. I absolutely loved it. It was great. And yeah, I really don't have any complaints with this one, to be honest. I love The Two Towers, definitely better than The Fellowship of the Ring. And it comes in at number four on my list. All right, moving on to my top three books. And number three is The Return of the King, the very final book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And this one goes out with a bang. I don't know what else to say about it. By the two towers, I was already in, really engaged with the story and falling in love with the trilogy. And then this one... It was just a very satisfying conclusion. There's some a lot of stuff in here that happens that's not in the movies, and it was great. Absolutely love this book. I really don't have many complaints with it at all. I Yeah, I don't know what to say about it. If you've been on the fence about reading Lord of the Rings, like I was for the longest time, I think you should just jump into it. The first book is a little bit slow to get into, but if you have the patience to get through some of that plotting detail, plotting pace, and just just some of that nonsense that goes on in the first book, it's, it's worth a while. There's a huge payoff in this book. It's worth it. Return of the King was amazing. And I can now say I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. <laughs> Maybe not as much to where I'll go and read the Silmarillion and all those other um, books on the lore of Middle Earth and things like that. I don't know if I'll quite go that far. But I absolutely love this trilogy. It was great. Yeah, Return of the King is number three. Okay, moving on to top two. And at number two, we have... Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And again, first time reading this classic, I had never read any of the Tarzan books before in my life. My only exposure to Tarzan was the classic Disney animated Tarzan movie. Um, and I was aware of a lot of the other Tarzan movies, live action ones. I think I might have seen a few of those a long time ago. And this is just so much different than any of the Tarzan movies out there, at least of the ones I've seen. And so, so much better. Again, I guess it's not really much of a surprise, but still, it was, it kind of was for me. <laughs> this book is extremely action packed and violent. And I was not expecting that going into it. It is very, very violent and in the best way possible. It just holds your attention throughout. There is not a single dull moment in this book. It is a bit pulpy. Yes, it's a bit unrealistic. It's not the most believable story in the world. But I can see why this book has such a huge cult following, why it has so many movie adaptations. This book was just great. I did read the sequel, The Return of Tarzan, after this. Unfortunately, I didn't care for that one as much. And this one, it, it wasn't perfect either. I didn't really like the cliffhanger ending we got. I didn't like how the book ended with Tarzan going into civilization. I would have preferred him to like go back to the jungle at the end of this book and then just have this as kind of like more of a standalone story. Leave room for a sequel, I can understand, but have more of a conclusive ending for this. If it would have had more of a conclusive ending, I think I would have given this book a perfect 5 out of 5 stars. As it is, though, it's still great, and I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this is a book I will continue to reread in the future. And, yeah, I can say I'm a Tarzan fan now. Again, I'm not entirely sure about continuing with the sequels because I wasn't really into Return of the Tarzan all that much. Not nearly as much as this one. So we'll see if I read any of the other books in the future. But I can see myself rereading this one. This this was great. If you've never re read Tarzan of the Apes, you need to. Okay. And my number one favorite book I have read this year. And again, those top five or so, they could probably be reordered if I put more time and thought into it. Uh, but the reason I decided to put this one at number one is because I can't think of anything bad about this book. Some of those other ones I could nitpick at few flaws here and there, a little thing or scene or two I didn't care for, whatever. Uh, this one, I can't think of anything about it that I didn't like. And that is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Now, I think earlier I mentioned that I didn't have any rereads this year on this list, with one possible exception, and this being it. Now, I vaguely remember reading this when I was a kid, or trying to read it, and I'm thinking what happened is I maybe started it and never finished it because I remember vaguely remembered some of the 
early scenes in here, the very beginning where they're at the inn and the pirate comes stumbling in and I think he's drunk or something. After that, I didn't remember anything. It felt like I was reading a brand new book. I, I'm pretty sure I was reading this for the first time. So it's kind of a reread, not really. I think maybe I started reading this when I was a kid in it at a very young age and maybe it was just a little bit too advanced for me at the time, a little bit too difficult. I didn't understand everything, so I put it down. But I can say without a doubt that this was my favorite book that I read this year. This was just a very fun, action-packed adventure story, kind of like Tarzan. There wasn't a dull moment in this book. There's just always something going on. And the story is told through the lens of our main character, um, Jim, Jim Hawkins, I believe his name is. <clears throat> I think, I think that's what his name was. Yep. All right here on the back, Jim Hawkins. And I think he's like 12 years old and he's basically following these pirates around looking for this lost buried treasure. And there's a lot of crazy things that happen in this book. And yeah, it's kind of a basic adventure, lost treasure story, but it's just so engaging. There's just so much that happens in here and it's a classic come on everyone knows about treasure island by now if you haven't read it then stop what you're doing and go read this book <laughs> i don't know what else to say uh robert lewis stevenson is one of my favorite authors of all time without a doubt and this book was five out of five stars treasure island was great okay those are my top 20 books that i've read this year i hope this video was not super long um, please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books what your thoughts are on them i'd love to discuss it with you guys Maybe let me know what your top favorite books were this year. And that's all I have for today, guys. So have a great day. Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year. Uh, all that fun stuff. Peace.